Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture 30 on measure and integration. Uh, in the previous lectures, we had defined what is called the product measure uh, on product space. In this lecture, we will specialize that construction on the set R 2, so which is a Cartesian product of real line with itself and the sigma algebra being that of either Borel sets or Lebesgue measurable sets and the measure being the Lebesgue measure. So, the topic for today's discussion is going to be Lebesgue measure and integral on the space R 2. So, let us just recall. So, we had defined uh, the product uh, measure space given uh, measure spaces x, a and mu and y, b and nu we defined uh, the product sigma algebra a times b on the product space x cross y and the product measure mu cross nu. So, today we will start looking at the particular case when x is equal to y equal to the real line and the sigma algebra A is same as the sigma algebra B is same as the sigma algebra of Lebesgue measurable sets on the real line and mu is same as nu which is same as the Lebesgue measure. So, we are looking at a copy of the real line, the sigma algebra of Lebesgue measurable sets and lambda the Lebesgue measure and taking its product with itself. So, that will give rise to uh, the product measure space R 2, the Lebesgue uh, measurable sets times uh, the Lebesgue measurable sets the sigma algebra and the product measure lambda cross lambda. Uh, if you recall, we had mentioned that even if the original measure spaces are complete, the product uh, measure space need not be complete. So, uh, this uh, product measure space R 2 uh, lambda R cross lambda R and uh, lambda cross lambda is not complete. So, we can always complete it and that the completion uh, is denoted by R 2 Lebesgue measurable subsets of R 2 and lambda of R 2. So, this is called the Lebesgue measure space. So, Lebesgue measure space is obtained from uh, the sigma algebra Lebesgue measurable sets times Lebesgue measurable sets completed with respect to the product uh, Lebesgue measure on R 2. So, this is uh, normally called the product uh, um, called the Lebesgue measurable measure space on R 2 and the sets in the uh, sigma algebra lambda of R 2 are called Lebesgue measurable sets uh, in R 2 and uh, the measure lambda of R 2 defined on this uh, completed space is called the Lebesgue measure on R 2. So, whenever one refers to the Lebesgue measure space, it is uh, uh, the complete measure space obtained via completing the product uh, measure on the product uh, sigma algebra. So, today we will uh, start looking at properties of uh, Lebesgue measurable sets and Lebesgue measure. So, let us uh, denote by I tilde as we have done for the real line, the collection of all left open right close intervals in real line. So, let us look at the rectangles obtained by such intervals. So, that we denoted by I tilde 2 upper uh, superscript 2 as I cross j rectangles whose uh, sides are left open right close intervals. Then we claim that uh, this I cross j is a semi algebra of subsets of R 2 and the sigma algebra generated by this is equal to uh, the Borel sigma algebra of R 2. So, to prove this, uh, uh, we already know that I tilde the left open right closed intervals uh, form uh, a semi algebra of subsets of real line and we have already shown that if you take rectangles consisting of elements of the um, uh, semi algebra, then itself form a semi algebra. namely the um, product of semi algebras is always a semi algebra. So, that general construction will tell that uh, uh, the space the set of uh, all uh, rectangles with left open right close intervals is a, a semi algebra. 
to show that uh, this uh, uh, sigma algebra generated by uh, the rectangles uh, i tilde 2 uh, is the Borel sigma algebra. We observe a few things. First of all, if you recall, uh, we had shown. Uh, so, let me just recall a fact that we have uh, shown uh, in the beginning of uh, defining product sigma algebras. Namely, uh, if we take uh, a set x and take a set y and here we have got a collection of subsets C and we have got a collection of subsets. So, these are collections of subsets. Then we can uh, form C cross D that is a collection of subsets of x cross y. Right? So, this is equal to all sets of the type P cross F where E belongs to C and F belongs to D. And now, one can generate a sigma algebra out of this collection C cross D. On the other hand, we can generate a sigma algebra by the collection C. We can also generate a sigma algebra by the collection D of subsets of Y and take, take uh, uh, the sigma algebra generated by the rectangles of this type. So, let us call it as uh, S of C cross S of D. Then the claim is that these two are equal, not always, whenever. So, we showed that these two are equal if x can be represented as a union of sets partition 1 to infinity and d can be written as a union of some sets d j's in the collection d of uh, uh, 1 to infinity. So, whenever this x can be represented at a disjoint union of sets from C and y can be represented as a disjoint union of elements of D, then whether you take the rectangles first and generate the sigma algebra or generate the sigma algebras and then take rectangles and generate the sigma algebra, both will be equal to same. So, this result we had uh, proved in the beginning of uh, the topic. So, as a consequence of this, we obtained. So, this implied one observation that if you take the Borel sigma algebra cross the Borel sigma algebra of R, that is equal to Borel sigma algebra of the space R 2. So, that is one observation, because uh, uh, the real line can be represented uh, as a countable union of say open sets or um, intervals. And uh, similarly, the same argument also implies that if I take the sigma algebra generated by this left open right close intervals cross the sigma algebra generated by left open right close intervals and then look at the product sigma algebra, then that will be same as the product sigma algebra of left open right close intervals cross left open right close intervals, because the whole real line can be written as a countable union of left open right close intervals. So, these two facts follow from our earlier construction. So, uh, we will keep that in mind and now what we want to show is that the Borel sigma algebra of R 2. Okay. So, that we know it is Borel sigma algebra of real line times okay, the product Borel sigma algebra of real line and Borel sigma algebra we know from our construction of real numbers that is the same as the sigma algebra generated by left open right close intervals. So, left open uh, Borel sigma algebra is generated by the sigma algebra of left open right close intervals. So, and this just now we observed is the sigma algebra generated by I cross I. So, that is same as the sigma algebra generated by I 2. So, that uh, completes the proof of the fact that the sigma algebra generated by uh, rectangles which are left open right close intervals is same as the Borel sigma algebra of R 2. So, that is one observation. Uh, so, that is very much similar to uh, the result in the real line where the left open right close intervals generated the sigma algebra of Borel subsets. The same result is true if we replace intervals by rectangles which are left open right close. Okay. So, that is the proof uh, we have just now said. So, S i is equal to S i cross i. So, Borel sigma algebra B r cross B r is 
the sigma algebra generated by intervals left open right close cross left open right close intervals which is same as the rectangles. So, now let us look at the next property that the Lebesgue measure that we have defined for a rectangle is lambda of i cross lambda of j is same as lambda of i into lambda of j. So, that is obvious because uh, we obtained uh, the product measure where uh, extension of the measure on the rectangles. So, what we are saying is the Lebesgue measure on R 2 is the natural extension of the notion of area in the plane. So, this is property is obvious built in the definition of the product uh, measure. And third observation is, so uh, recall we just now said that uh, the Lebesgue measure space R 2, Lebesgue measures uh, uh, subsets of R 2 and Lebesgue measure, the Lebesgue measurable uh, subsets. So, this space which is the space Lebesgue measure space, on one hand uh, we define it as the completion of uh, the Lebesgue measurable sets cross Lebesgue measurable sets. And this is also the completion of uh, the measure space of real line with Borel subsets of R 2. And that is once again um, uh, by the fact that the Borel subsets of R 2 are inside this and uh, the Borel sets subsets of R 2 uh, and uh, the Lebesgue measurable sets they differ only by uh, sets of measure 0. So, that is also the completion. So, um, one way of looking at is look at um, uh, look at uh, the Lebesgue measurable subsets R 2, it being the completion. So, it is the uh, is the class of all outer Lebesgue measurable um, subsets in R 2 uh, with respect to the product uh, measure. And uh, on the semi algebra uh, I 2 uh, of rectangles, it is given by the product. So, this is obviously the completion uh, of the measure space uh, R 2. Okay. So, th these are obvious facts. Uh, uh, so, we should keep in mind uh, which are very much similar to uh, that of the real line. Uh, they play a, a role later on uh, when we want to look at uh, null sets in R 2. So, basically the sets which are going to be of importance are going to be the Lebesgue measurable sets are uh, Lebesgue measurable sets cross Lebesgue measurable sets in R 2 or Borel subsets in R 2. Here is another uh, uh, useful fact about uh, Lebesgue measure in R 2, which connects it with the uh, uh, topologically nice sets. Namely, the Lebesgue measure uh, of R 2 of a any open non empty open set is always bigger than 0. So, that uh, follows from uh, the fact that if u is contained in R 2 is open and u is not equal to empty set, then so here is the set u. So, there is always a rectangle left open right close rectangle inside it. So, there is a rectangular neighborhood. So, implies there exists a rectangular So, non empty. So, there is a point x belonging to u. So, there is a uh, there is a rectangular neighborhood uh, of x. So, let us call that neighborhood as n. So, this is the rectangle n which is contained in u, but uh, the Lebesgue measure of. Uh, so, that means the Lebesgue measure of u will be bigger than Lebesgue measure of uh, n which is always going to be bigger than 0, because it is a uh, no, is a non empty neighborhood. So, for every non empty you know, open set, the Lebesgue measure is always uh, Lebesgue measure is always positive, if the set is non empty. And the second important thing is, uh, supposing you take a set K, which is a compact subset of R 2. So, let us look at a compact subset of R 2. So, uh, K is contained in R 2 and k compact. If a set is compact that implies it must be bounded. So, k compact implies k bounded and that means, so saying the set is bounded implies 
that so this is the set k which is compact so that means it is bounded so it must be inside a, a rectangle so k bounded implies so k bounded implies k is inside some i cross j okay uh, with i lambda of i so implies lambda r2 of k will be less than lambda of i cross lambda of j which is finite so finite intervals compact implies bounded so there is a finite rectangle including it so that means it is finite so uh, these are two relations about open sets and uh, compact sets there are more relations uh, uh, which relate uh, uh, like in the real line that we can one can prove a result that for example a set e is lebesgue measurable if and only if for every epsilon you can find a open set which includes it and the difference as measure small so that is very much similar to the real line and the proof is also very much similar to the real line so will not uh, prove this result uh, a interested reader if is um, uh, somebody who is interested should try to copy uh, and ex ex the proof of the real line and extend that uh, proof to the case of r2 and uh, similar so that this will give us that uh, another uh, result is that for uh, the lebesgue measure of r2 you can approximate it by this uh, from inside by compact sets so supremum of lambda of r2 where k is uh, compact so these results uh, um, basically uh, are of importance so these are called regularity conditions uh, for uh, the lebesgue measure in r2 so we will not uh, prove these results just for the sake of uh, knowledge uh, i am mentioning these results here so that later on if you come across you can uh, uh, look at proofs of these results so the next result we want to uh, look at is how are the lebesgue measurable sets related with the group structure of uh, the um, space r2 so let us uh, take a subset e of r2 and let us look at is a point x uh, vector x in r2 so we will define the translate of the set e by x to be as in real line y plus x where y belongs to e so take the set e and shift every element every element of e by the vector x so it is y plus x so the claim the first claim is that if e is a borel set and the point x belongs to r2 then e plus x also is a borel set that is one property and the lebesgue measure of r2 of the set e is same as the lebesgue measure of the set e plus x that means the lebesgue uh, measure is uh, one says it is translation invariant on the class of all borel subsets of r2 so uh, the proof uh, of this fact uh, that uh, for every set e e plus x belongs to br2 uh, uh, and uh, the fact that the Lebesgue measure of the translated set is equal to Lebesgue measure of the original set are uh, standard applications of uh, uh, the techniques that we have been using, namely the sigma algebra monotone class uh, theorems. So, uh, let me illustrate this once again so that this um, idea of using monotone class uh, convergence theorem, uh, monotone class sigma algebra uh, technique uh, settles down in the mind. So, we first want to uh, so prove namely that we want to show that for every E a Borel subset of R2, if I look at E plus x that is also a Borel subset of R2. So, the technique is as follows let us collect together all sets A. So, form the collection A of all those subsets E belonging to B R 2 all Borel subsets say that the required property is true E plus x belongs to B R 2. So, look at all uh, sets having uh, this property. So, claim so that is a sigma algebra technique claim 1 all open subsets of R 2 
are inside this collection. So, we will prove two claims one and secondly that the class A is a sigma algebra. So, if we prove uh, these two facts uh, uh, about the class A, then that will imply because it includes open subsets of R 2. So, it will include the smallest sigma algebra generated by. So, these two facts will imply these two facts will imply that the sigma uh, that the sigma algebra generated by uh, sigma algebra generated by open sets will be inside uh, uh, inside the class A and that is equal to the Borel sigma algebra. So, that will prove that Borel sigma algebra is equal to A. So, let us first show that the open subsets of uh, R 2 are inside A. So, let us take a open set. So, the, to prove the first fact, we have to show that if uh, a set. So, to, to show the first one, so let u be open in R 2. So, we want to show that this implies u plus x belongs to B R 2 and this follows because this follows because if u is open implies u plus x is open. So, that is a simple fact because how do you show that uh, u plus x is open basically saying that u is open. Okay. So, let us take a point y plus x belonging to u plus x. Okay. If y plus x belongs to u plus x where y belongs to u and u open implies there is a neighborhood. So, let us call it as B delta y. So, y belongs to a neighborhood which is contained in u, but then that implies that uh, y plus uh, x belongs to the translation of the neighborhood that is contained in u plus x. So, that means for every point y plus x there is a neighborhood when you shift when you shift a ball that remains a ball in the plane. So, right. So, that is a basic fact we are using if you translate a neighborhood that remains a neighborhood in u plus x. So, that implies that if u is open if u is open in R 2 then u plus x is also an open set and hence belong to B R 2. So, that proves the first fact namely open subsets uh, belong to A. So, let us now uh, to show that. So, this proves the first fact that open subsets uh, belong to R 2. So, to show that A is a sigma algebra that is this very standard technique uh, we have been using it uh, very often. If, if a set E belongs to A that means, E plus x belongs to B R 2. So, let us write that. So, if E belongs. So, if E belongs to so, if a set E belongs to uh, collection A, so that implies E plus x belongs to B R 2 and that implies because B R 2 is a sigma algebra. So, that will imply its complement belongs to B R 2, but this is same as the first taking complement and then trans taking translate. So, that belongs to B R 2. So, that means, E complement belongs to B R 2. So, if whenever A belongs to uh, collection A, it is E complement plus x belongs to B R 2. So, that means, uh, E complement belongs to A. So, E is closed under complements and similarly, E i is belonging to A will imply that um, union of. So, each E i plus x belongs to B R 2. So, that will imply that union of E i plus x belongs to B R 2 union over i, but this is same as union of E i is plus x belongs to B R 2. So, that will imply that the union of E i is union of E i is belong to A. So, A i is belong, belong to union also belongs to A. So, that will prove that uh, A is a uh, so A is an algebra. So, uh, A is a sigma algebra. So, A is a sigma algebra including open sets. So, it includes everything. So, that will prove uh, that. 
So, this is a sigma algebra technique I have been mentioning that uh, sigma algebra technique that we have mentioned says that implies that uh, whenever uh, E belongs to B R 2 implies E plus x belongs to B R 2. So, that is uh, what we have uh, proved. So, to show the other thing to prove that lambda of E plus x is same as lambda of E, everything is in R 2. To show this once again let us define M to be the collection of all those subsets E. Okay. M to be the collection of all those subsets uh, E belonging to B R 2 for which this property is true lambda of E plus x is equal to lambda of E. Okay. So, we want to show that B R 2 is inside M because M is already a subset of B R 2. So, that will prove that M is equal to B R 2 and hence this property will hold for all uh, subsets of B R 2. Now, to show this the technique is the monotone class theorem. So, one show M is a monotone class. Two M is closed under finite disjoint unions, and third, the rectangles B R cross B R rectangles are inside M. Okay. So once these three facts are proved will be through as follows because these rectangles are inside it and uh, if this was a monotone, this is a monotone class. So, the idea is that the uh, step 3 will imply that the monotone class generated by uh, B r cross B r is also a inside M. Okay. And this class is also closed under finite disjoint union. So, this collection Okay. The sets which are inside M will also be closed under uh, finite uh, disjoint uh, unions. So, that will uh, that will prove. So, it is the monotone class closed under finite disjoint unions. So, that will imply that uh, uh, so, B r uh, the rectangles are inside it. So, the algebra generated by uh, uh, the monotone class generated by uh, finite disjoint unions also will be inside it because this is inside. Okay. So, this and this is closed under finite disjoint unions. So, that means, the algebra generated by rectangles will also be inside it, okay. but M is a monotone class which is uh, closed under finite disjoint unions. So, that must be a uh, uh, sigma uh, so, so monotone class generated by an algebra is also a sigma algebra. So, sigma algebra generated will come inside it. Okay. So, hence we will have uh, everything is equal. Okay. So, uh, so the idea of the proof is that which one should prove these three things because after these three things are proved. So, well, what will the proof uh, imply? So, see, so three will imply three plus two. So, this is a semi algebra because B R cross B R a semi algebra. It is inside M, and M is closed under finite disjoint unions. Will imply that the algebra generated by so f of B R cross B R will be inside M. So the algebra generated by this comes inside M. But now implies by one, M is a monotone class, so it includes this algebra. So the monotone class generated by this algebra. is also inside M, but the monotone class generated by an algebra is same as the sigma algebra. So, this is same as the sigma algebra generated by this algebra B r cross B r 
and that is equal to the Borel sigma algebra of R 2. So, that is the line of argument that will prove that uh, B R 2. So, this is uh, the line of argument which will prove that B R 2 is a subset of M. So, we have to verify uh, these three things namely M is a monotone class, M is closed under finite disjoint unions and rectangles are uh, uh, Borel rectangles are inside M. So, to show that uh, to show that let us look at the first one that M is a uh, monotone class. So, to show that M is a monotone class let us look at the proof. So, proof of 1. So, let us look at a sequence E n which is increasing okay, uh, increasing to E okay, in increasing to E and let us say E n's belong to M. So, that will imply that lambda of E n plus x is equal to lambda of E n for every n. Now, if E n is increasing, if E n is increasing then E n plus so x is also increasing okay, and lambda being a measure this converges to lambda of E plus x and by the same thing this converges to lambda of E. So, that says lambda of E plus x is equal to lambda of E. Okay. So, if E n increase to E then that will imply that these two are equal. So, E belongs to M and similarly uh, for a decreasing sequence uh, also similar property if E n are decreasing to E and uh, lambda of say uh, the lambda of E 1 is finite then the intersection uh, the E which is the intersection will also belong to M. So, that will prove the fact that uh, uh, E is uh, M is a. So, that will prove the fact that M is a monotone uh, class. So, that is ok. Now, let us show that M is closed under finite uh, disjoint unions. So, for that to show that M is closed under finite disjoint unions let us take let E 1 and E 2 belong to M E 1 intersection E 2 equal to empty set. Okay. Now, E 1 and E 2 belong to M. So, that so this fact implies lambda of E 1 plus x is equal to lambda of E 1 and similarly lambda of uh, E 2 plus x is also equal to lambda of E 2. Now, E 1 and E 2 disjoint implies that the sets E 2 E 1 the translates of E 1 and translate of E 2 are also disjoint. So, that is a simple thing to observe. So, that will imply that lambda of E 1 plus x union of E 2 plus x because these sets are disjoint. So, the Lebesgue measure of the union of in R 2 is same as the Lebesgue measure in R 2 of E 1 x plus x plus lambda of E 2 plus x. Okay. But E 1 and E 2 belong to M. So, this is equal to lambda of E 1 plus lambda of E 2 and that is equal to E 1 and E 2 are disjoint. So, it is lambda of E 1 union of E 2. So, what we have shown is if E 1 and so what we have shown is if E 1 and E 2 uh, if E 1 and E 2 belong to M and they are disjoint then lambda of E 1 union E 2 is same as lambda of E 1 x plus uh, union of uh, E 2 x. But a simple observation will tell you that this is also same as lambda of E 1 union E 2 plus x. So, whether you take translates first and then take the union that is same as taking union and the translates. So, that will imply. So, this will imply that E 1 union E 2 also belongs to M. So, whenever E 1 and E 2 are disjoint uh, pair are disjoint their union also belongs to it. So, that proves uh, the second fact namely M is closed under finite disjoint unions. 
Finally, we prove the third fact namely uh, the rectangles are inside M. So, that again is a, a straightforward simple fact to prove. So, to prove that let us observe. So, to prove the third thing let us observe the following namely. So, let us take uh, E f belonging to B r cross B r to show E cross f uh, E and f both belong to B r. Okay. We want to show that the cross product belongs to B r cross B r. So, that is what we want to show. So, to show that let us observe and E and F uh, belong to okay, B R. So, we know that whenever E is in F, so E plus x. So, let us take a vector, let us take a vector x which is equal to uh, A comma B. Okay. Then what is uh, E plus, uh, <coughs> then we know that E plus A belongs to B R and also E plus B belongs to B R because E and F are subsets in B R. So, the translates belong and lambda of E plus A is same as lambda of E and uh, that was the set F and lambda of F plus B is same as lambda of F. right? So, now look at the set E cross F <coughs> translated by X, X is A B. So, what is that? So, that is equal to E plus A cross product with F plus B. Okay. So, the Lebesgue measure of this set <coughs> sorry E cross F plus X will be equal to this is a rectangle. So, the Lebesgue measure of E plus A into Lebesgue measure of F plus B, but that is equal to Lebesgue measure of E into Lebesgue measure of F because Lebesgue measure on the real line is translation invariant. So, that is equal to Lebesgue measure of E cross F. So, what we have shown is that if E cross F is a rectangle Borel re rectangle then translate of the Borel rectangle has the same measure as the rectangle itself. So, that will that proves the third thing namely that the Borel sets cross the Borel sets is inside M. So, all the three facts are proved and that will uh, imply that uh, B R 2 is a uh, subset of M and hence all for all. Uh, so, that is what we have shown is that. So, we have what we have shown is that uh, the Lebesgue measure is a measure on the plane which has the property that Lebesgue measure of every uh, for every Borel set E it is translated is also uh, translation is also a uh, Borel set and the Lebesgue measure of the translated set is equal to Lebesgue measure of the original set. So, this is called uh, the translation invariance properties of uh, 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 the Lebesgue measure on the plane. So, as uh, as in the um, case of uh, real line, uh, in the real line we showed that the Lebesgue measure on the line is a translation invariant measure. And so, similarly we have shown that the product of the Lebesgue measure uh, taken uh, on R 2 uh, is also a translation invariant measure. Of course, the natural question arises um, on the real line we have shown that essentially uh, Lebesgue measure is the only translation invariant measure. And we will show uh, for uh, this Lebesgue measure on the plane also is uh, essentially a unique uh, is the unique uh, translation invariant measure. Uh, unique in the sense that uh, a scalar multiple uh, is again translation invariant anyway. So, up to a mul multiplication by a scalar we will show that the Lebesgue measure in the plane is also trans, uh, is a unique translation invariant measure on the Borel sigma algebra. So, but before that let us uh, prove uh, a property about uh, the integrals of uh, uh, functions uh, on the uh, on, the, on the plane. So, uh, the next property we want to analyze is the following namely. So, this proof so we have already gone through uh, the sigma algebra monotone class technique. 
So, so that sigma algebra monoton class technique that we have already explained. So, uh, that is uh, just uh, shown here that show that m includes uh, f of r and hence uh, it will include the sigma algebra generated by it and that will prove. So, the next property I wanted to uh, illustrate is the following namely for every non negative Borel measurable function f on r 2 and any uh, vector y in r 2 the integral of the translated function. So, integral of f of x plus y with respect to the Lebesgue measure is same as the integral of the function itself and it is also same as integral of the negative of uh, the function namely f of minus x. That means, the Lebesgue integral uh, for non negative functions is invariant under translation and this is what is called reflection x goes to uh, minus x. So, uh, a proof of this is basically uh, applications of the simple function uh, technique. So, let me just uh, illustrate uh, one or two steps of uh, this proof that uh, this is uh, uh, true. So, let us uh, look at the first one. So, let us try to uh, let us prove that if f is a non negative measurable function on R 2, then we want to prove that the integral of f of x plus y d lambda r 2. So, this is over r 2 is equal to integral of f of x um, d lambda r 2 of x. So, this is what we want to prove. So, the simple uh, function technique uh, as you recall is the following first step let us take f to be the indicator function of the set E where E is a Borel uh, subset of R 2. Okay. So, in that case the left hand side. So, this left hand side is integral of the indicator function of E x plus y d lambda R 2, okay, which is nothing but. So, the, you are integrating with respect to x. So, that is same as x plus y belonging to E means uh, it is x belonging to e minus y. So, this is integral of the indicator function of e minus y. So, it is lambda r 2 of the set e minus y. Okay. But that is same by the translation invariant property it is lambda of the set e. Okay. So, and this thing f is the indicator function. So, indicator function of x d lambda r 2 which is same as lambda r 2 of E. So, what we are saying is that as a first step the required claim namely integral of f of x plus y is integral to well, integral f holds whenever f is the indicator function of a set E. Now, both sides being uh, integrals. So, implies so step 1. So, step 1 implies step 2 namely the required claim holds for f equal to non negative simple measurable function. R 2 to R. So, this claim holds because any non negative uh, simple measurable function is a uh, finite linear combination of uh, characteristic functions or the indicator functions. So, for e each indicator function we have shown this. So, that uh, will imply that the required claim holds for non negative simple functions. So, and the third step if f is non negative measurable then we know implies there exists a sequence S n of non negative simple measurable functions S n increasing to f and integral of f to be equal to limit n going to infinity integral of S n d lambda. So, saying that f is non negative measurable means that f is limit of uh, non negative simple measurable functions and uh, the integral of f can be defined as the limit of 
the integrals of non negative simple measurable functions. Okay. But for non negative simple measurable function each S n. So, for every n we know that the required claim holds by step 2. So, by step 2 we know that S n of x plus y d lambda r 2 of x okay, is equal to integral of S n of x d lambda r 2 of x. So, that is by step 2. Now, as S n is increasing to f, so clearly the translates this will increase to the translate of the function f. So, this implies that in the limit by monotone convergence theorem. So, an application of monotone convergence theorem will say that as n goes to infinity, this will converge to integral of f of x plus y d lambda of r 2 of x. Right? And on the other hand, we know this converges to integral of f x d lambda of r 2. So, these must be equal. So, that means, for a non negative measurable function, this required uh, conclusion holds. Okay. So, that is how one proves that is how one proves uh, the claim namely f of x plus y is equal to uh, f of integral of the translate is equal to uh, the integral of the original function. Um, uh, so, basically uh, is a, what is what we call as the simple function. Uh, technique applied to it. So, uh, a same uh, argument will uh, similar argument will um, show that integral of f of x is same as integral of f of minus x. Okay. So, for there one has to uh, use the fact that the Lebesgue measure of uh, a set E in R 2 is same as the Lebesgue measure of. Uh, so, for the step 2, so let me just indicate uh, what we need for step 2 to show that integral of f of x d lambda r 2 of x is equal to integral of f of minus x d lambda r 2. Okay. When f is equal to indicator function of the set E, that means we need the fact that lambda r 2 of a set E is equal to lambda r 2 of minus of E what is minus of e okay so minus of e uh, so minus of e is the set minus the vector x where x belongs to e okay now so to prove that this is so once again one has to go to the uh, sigma algebra technique okay so consider define a to be the collection of all those sets E belonging to B R 2, where uh, for which uh, you can uh, say that lambda of E is equal to lambda of minus E. Okay. So, look at all this collection of these sets. So, claim, so one will show that show rectangles are inside it. That means, if I take sets E cross F belonging to B R cross B R, then E cross F belongs to A and A is a sigma algebra. So, once again if these two steps are proved, that will prove that uh, this claim holds for every uh, Borel subset also and hence for the indicator function of a set E. So, that is uh, we leave it as an exercise once again uh, is a uh, straightforward verifications. So, do that. So, once that is done, so that will prove uh, the second uh, equality also. And now, in this uh, proof uh, one more observation uh, we, we want to make here is the following. If I replace lambda r 2 by any see in this proofs of these two things, we have not used anywhere the fact that we are on the uh, uh, we are on uh, lambda is especially the Lebesgue measure. Essentially, we use the fact that this measure lambda of r 2 is translation invariant. 
So, if mu is if you replace this measure Lebesgue measure on R 2 by any translation invariant measure, then this uh, uh, result that f of x plus y is equal to integral of f of x will remain true for lambda of R 2 replaced by any translation invariant measure. So, this is an observation we should keep in mind uh, for the future reference. So, finally, we want to uh, prove the fact that the translation invariance uh, uh, is a unique property for the Lebesgue measure. So, let us take any measure mu which is sigma finite on the Borel subsets of R 2 and assume it is translation invariant. And let us assume that there is some particular set E naught such that the measure of the set E naught is positive and the measure mu of E naught is c times a constant multiple of uh, uh, Lebesgue measure of uh, the set E naught and it is finite. So, there is a set of finite Lebesgue measure, finite positive Lebesgue measure say so that mu of E naught is a cons constant c times Lebesgue measure of E naught for some particular uh, uh, set E naught. Then the claim is that this property holds for every subset of uh, Borel subset. That means, mu of E is constant multiple of the Lebesgue measure. So, that, that will prove the uniqueness of the Lebesgue measure uh, with respect to translation invariance. So, let us prove this. So, as I observed that uh, the, uh, the integral of the translate of a function is equal to integral of the function remains true for any uh, translation invariant measure. So, in particular for mu. So, that property we will be using so, now let us, so we want to show that mu of E is constant multiple of Lebesgue measure of uh, E for every set E, but C is equal to, so what is C? Let us just look at C, C I can compute from here, C is equal to mu of E 0 divided by lambda uh, of uh, E 0. So, if I put that value, so to show that mu of E is equal to C times lambda R 2 of E, it is equivalent to showing that lambda of E 0, Lebesgue measure of E 0 into measure of E is same as measure of E 0 mu of E 0 into Lebesgue measure of E for every subset. So, this equality we should show for every subset E of R 2. So, that we will show it as an application of uh, Fubini's theorem. So, let us take the left hand side. So, lambda of E 0 mu of E is equal to uh, lambda of uh, E 0 and mu of E is integral of the indicator function with respect to y d mu y. Now, take this lambda R 2 in inside and the use the fact that it is translation invariant. So, lambda R 2 of E 0 is same as lambda R 2 of E 0 minus y and I put it in under the integral sign. Okay. So, uh, the required uh, quantity is equal to integral of uh, lambda uh, Lebesgue measure of E 0 minus y into indicator function of E. And now, this Lebesgue measure, I will write it as a integral in the form of integral. So, I get Lebesgue measure of E 0 minus y is integral of the indicator function of E 0 minus y, same as it. So, it is same as the integral of the indicator function of E 0 of x plus y d lambda r 2. So, here we got uh, uh, double integral, iterated integral and the function involved are non-negative. So, by Fubini's theorem, uh, the first part for non-negative functions, I can interchange the order of integration. So, let us interchange. So, earlier we had uh, inner integral was with respect to lambda and outer with respect to mu. So, when we interchange, mu comes inside and lambda goes outside. So, that is the integral. And now, once again mu is translation invariant. So, that means, in this integral, if I shift y to y plus x, the integral will remain the same. Uh, y minus x, then integral will remain the same. So, let us do the shifting, shift uh, this to y minus x. So, indicator function of y minus x, indicator function of E 0 x plus y. So, that becomes y d mu y. And now, once again, we apply Fubini's theorem and go back. So, when I apply, so mu goes out and lambda r 2 comes inside. So, that is uh, indicator function of E y minus x lambda of r 2 of x but that is same as uh, Lebesgue measure of 
the set E and this is Lebesgue uh, mu of E naught. So, that is equal to this. So, twice an application of the fact uh, Fubini's theorem for non-negative functions and the earlier property gives us uh, the required fact namely uh, the Lebesgue measure is the translation invariant measure unique translation invariant measure on. So, today we have uh, looked at the properties of Lebesgue measure uh, with respect to uh, the topologically nice sets namely open sets compact sets and with respect to the group operation of translation. Uh, on the plane there is another uh, transformation possible namely you can take a set E and rotate it. Okay. Not only you can translate you can also rotate it or magnify a set. So, we will uh, next lecture we will analyze how Lebesgue measure uh, changes with respect to uh, what are called linear transformations in the plane and uh, which include rotations and magnifications. Thank you.